In this example, we'll create a program that involves a graphical user interface, or GUI. We'll look at building the GUI, using an image in the GUI, uh, changing fonts in the GUI, and creating more than one listener to handle events from multiple components. So this program is intended to be a mortgage calculator. The user can type in the amount of the loan, the interest rate, and the number of years of the loan, and click on buttons to either compute the monthly payment or the total interest that would be paid over the lifetime of the loan. This is what the interface is going to look like. Notice it involves a graphic, uh, a graphical image, as well as uh, some changes in fonts, and uh, of course labels, buttons, and text fields. So to get started, I've already written the basic framework for my program in two files. One is mortgagemain.java, and mortgagemain has simply just the one method in it, the main method. And in that main method, it just uh, creates an instance of the class mortgage frame. Mortgage frame is a class that extends JFrame. So, like most of our programs, we are going to use the following pattern for graphical user interfaces. We first create a class that implements, or excuse me, extends JFrame. So here I have public class mortgage frame extends JFrame. And my listeners are then handled by inner classes within this JFrame class. Um, you can see that I have the framework for two inner classes already built. There's one for one called payment button listener and one called interest button listener and each of those two listeners is um, there to handle events from one of the two buttons. I also have set up my instance variables. I th I've thought ahead of time about the different uh, components that I need in my GUI and I've created variables for several of them. I have three text fields here for the loan amount, the interest rate, and the term of the loan. I have two buttons, one for each of the different computations I'd like to make, one to compute the monthly payment called Compute Payment JB, and then another to compute the total interest called Compute Total Interest JB. And then I have two more instance variables that one is a label and one is a panel this is uh, going to be used for the output. Uh, the, the output label will, will be used to, dis to display the output to the user, and the panel is used to contain just that one label. So I have my constructor already shelled out a little bit. Um, I've already placed some method calls in here to set the title of the frame, to set the size of the frame, this size came, th these numbers came, I came up with just by simply uh, creating the program and um, choosing a size that, that best fit the components. So it was a little bit of trial and error to get that. And then I have, um, set def I'm setting the default close operation. So when the um, window is closed, the program will end. And then of course I have a call to set visible to make the window visible. I've also created a method down here at the bottom which computes the monthly payment for a loan. This was um, part of our lab number two, an early lab that we did in this class, and so that should be most of that should be fairly obvious because we've computed that before. The only difference is here I've placed it in a method so I can access the method uh, easily from other places within my program. Okay, so I'm going to get started by building the GUI. So I'll start right, he right here within the constructor. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a panel to contain most of the, uh, most of the components that are going to be in the main part of the window. And then I'll go ahead and create my, the three text fields that I need.
I'm going to go ahead and make all three text fields the same size. Next, I'm going to create the um, icon that's going to hold the graphical image that's up at the top left of our, of our graphical user interface. Notice that in this directory, I have a file called house.png. And that, that file contains the image, the house image, that you saw in the screenshot earlier. So I'll create an instance of the class image icon. An image icon can load uh, the image directly from a file, so I, I only have to provide the file name as the argument to the image icon constructor. And then I'll create a JLabel that uses the image icon. The JLabel includes not only the icon, but also some text. And the text will be displayed next to the image. The third argument, swing constants.center, defines where the text should be displayed relative to the icon or relative to the image. I'd also like to have the font for the text to be fairly large, so I'm going to change the font for this JLabel. Okay, so I'm ready to add this component to my main panel. Okay, the next step is to just go through and create the labels and add the text fields to the panel. Next, I need to add the two buttons. Okay, I'm almost finished with my basic GUI setup. I just need to add a um, label into a panel on the uh, south part of the border layout. So I'll create the panel and then I will create a label to, to place within the panel. And just for fun I'll make the uh, background of the panel a different color. Okay, I've created both of my panels. Now I'm just going to go ahead and add the panels to the J-frame. So, I think I'm done building my GUI. So now would be a good time to stop and compile and test and make sure the GUI is looking the way we'd like it to look. So I'll go down here and compile. And here it is. This looks pretty good. So I think I'm ready to move on. Okay, let's, next step is to actually connect the buttons up with their appropriate listeners. So I'll go back up into my constructor, and just near where I created the two buttons, 
I'll make sure to add action listeners for each of those buttons. And I'm going to add instances of the classes that I have defined below. So for the payment button, I need an instance of payment button listener. And for the total interest button, I need an instance of my interest button listener. Okay, so now I've made the connection between the components and their listeners. Now I just need to go down here and implement the code for the listeners. For the payment button listener, I basically want to compute the monthly payment and display that monthly payment in the output, uh, in the output label. So the first step is, is to, in the listener is to take the information out of the text fields. So I'll grab the amount from the loan amount text field and I'll use double parse double to, to convert it from a string to a double. I'll do the same thing for the other text fields. Okay, so I've retrieved the three pieces of information from the th three text fields. Now I'm just going to compute the payment. And I'll do that by simply calling the method that I created earlier. Now that I've computed the payment, I'll simply change the output, la output label to display the result. Okay, that's it for the payment button. Next, let's do the same thing, or a similar thing, for the interest button listener. So when the interest button is clicked, I need to do a very similar thing. I need to compute the payment first. So basically, I'm just going to do the same um, few, first few steps that I did in the payment button listener. I'll retrieve the information from the three text fields and then compute the monthly payment. Once I have the payment, I need to be able to compute the total interest. And the total interest is going to be the total amount paid minus um, the original amount of the loan. So the total amount paid would be the payment, the monthly payment times the number of months, which is the term times 12. And then I'll subtract the original amount of the loan. Now I'll just pr put that information into the output label. Okay, so we have the two listeners finished. Let's test the program and see if it's working. Okay, so I've already computed by hand these values. And when I click on Compute Monthly Payment, the label down at the bottom shows a monthly payment of 1521.30 or 1521.30. And and based on my by-hand calculations, that's correct. 
Now let's compute the total interest. I'll click on the Compute Total Interest button, and we get 2011.20. And again, I can verify that by computing it by hand and making sure that it's correct. So that's the program. Now, just to make things look a little bit nicer, let's see if we can change the formatting of the numbers so the numbers appear rounded to two decimal places and add the dollar sign. So let's close this and go back to our listeners. So instead of using um, set text the way I have it, I've done it here, I'm going to use the string format function or method to uh, compute a string using a similar technique to, to how system.out.printf works. So I can use a method string.format, which is the format method in the string class, which works almost exactly the same as printf. So I'll create the string by using string.format put that into a variable called output, and then I'll use that variable in my set text call. And I'll go down and do a similar thing in the interest button listener. Okay, so let's compile and test. I'll use the same test numbers that I did before. Good, and now the output looks much cleaner. So that's a basic GUI or graphical user interface program. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.